In 1935, a cinematic classic emerged, captivating audiences with its eerie allure and timeless appelled iconic Bride of Frankenstein. The sequel to the 1931 horror classic continued to delve into the macabre world of Mary Shelley's creation, exploring the consequences of man's quest for playing God. As we delve into the legacy of this film, we ponder, can you share a personal story of how this movie has inspired or impacted your life? What enduring qualities do you think make this movie an everlasting symbol of the industry? Before we unravel these questions, let's set the stage with some intriguing insights about The Bride of Frankenstein. Directed by James Whale, the film boasts notable performances from Boris Karloff as the monster and Elsa Lanchester as the eponymous bride. Its narrative finesse and visual brilliance contributed to its lasting influence on the horror genre, shaping the expectations of generations to come. Now, as we reflect on this cinematic gem, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to The Bride of Frankenstein. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. What indelible mark has this movie left on your cinematic journey? The sequel to the 1931 film Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein, faced initial reluctance from director James Whale. Despite Universal's consideration of a sequel without Whale, he eventually agreed after four years of persuasion. The film explores two potential storylines, one involving an educated monster continuing Dr. Frankenstein's work, and another depicting Frankenstein's creation of a death ray on the brink of a world war. One intriguing aspect of the movie is a scene added later in production due to censorship concerns. The monster's encounter with a gypsy camp was filmed after sneak previews prompted the removal of another scene. This last-minute addition, shot after principal filming and completion of the musical score, stands out as the only segment without accompanying music. Another notable detail involves a tiny mermaid in a bottle owned by Dr. Pretorius. This miniature aquatic creature was portrayed by Josephine McKim, a member of the 1924 and 1928 U.S. Women's Olympic swim teams. Notably, she was part of the team that won the gold medal in the 400-meter freestyle relay in 1928, and had previously served as Maureen O'Sullivan's body double in a nude swimming scene in the 1934 film Tarzan and his mate. In summary, The Bride of Frankenstein, a sequel born from directorial reluctance, weaves together a tale of an educated monster and a looming world war. The movie's dynamic took an unexpected turn with a last-minute addition, the gypsy camp scene, the only part devoid of a musical score. Josephine McKim's role as a tiny mermaid adds an interesting layer, showcasing her Olympic achievements and earlier work as a body double. The film is a unique blend of creative decisions and historical context, contributing to its enduring legacy. In The Bride of Frankenstein, Boris Karloff's protest against the monster speaking was overruled, altering the character's appearance. Unable to remove his bridge work, Karloff's monster appears fuller-faced than in the 1931 predecessor. Censorship also played a role, transforming Pretorius' derogatory line about fairy tales to Bible stories. However, the sneering delivery by Ernest the Siger left an indelible impact. Meanwhile, Elsa Lanchester, standing at 54, portrayed the iconic bride on seven tall stilts, rendering her immobile. Tight bandages confined her, necessitating studio transport and sustenance through a straw. These behind-the-scenes insights add layers to the Bride of Frankenstein's legacy, showcasing the challenges and creative choices that shaped this enduring classic. Cinematographer John Mescal brought both skill and challenge to the set of The Bride of Frankenstein. Despite his proficiency, Mescal's serious drinking problem required the studio to arrange safe transportation for him. While intoxicated, he efficiently handled his job, earning favor from director James Whale for his speed and minimal fuss over technical details. Even with this hiccup, Mescal's contribution added a unique dynamic to the film's production. The challenges extended beyond cinematography. Director Whale's determination to cast Op. Heggy as the blind hermit led to a temporary shutdown of production, emphasizing Whale's commitment to his vision. This pause, from February 19th to March 2nd, 1935, underscored the significance of Heggy's role in the film. Interestingly, the role of Mrs. Shelley and the monster's mate had initial considerations for actresses Bridget Helm 
and Louise Brooks. Helm's recent marriage and refusal to leave Germany opened the door for other possibilities, showcasing the intricate casting decisions involved in bringing the characters to life. These behind-the-scenes insights into the challenges and choices made during the production of The Bride of Frankenstein add depth to the narrative, shedding light on the dedication of the filmmakers and the intricate process of bringing this enduring classic to the screen. In 2007, Premiere Magazine ranked The Line We Belong Dead from The Bride of Frankenstein as the 63 of the 100 Greatest Movie Lines. This iconic line, delivered by the monster, resonates with the film's powerful narrative and enduring legacy. The Bride of Frankenstein, directed by James Whale, faced challenges and underwent creative decisions that shaped its unique character. Whale, initially reluctant to helm the sequel, eventually agreed after four years of persuasion. The film explores intriguing storylines, including an educated monster continuing Dr. Frankenstein's work, and the creation of a death ray on the brink of a world war. Notably, a scene depicting the monster's encounter with a gypsy camp was added later in production due to censorship concerns, standing out as the only segment without accompanying music. Boris Karloff's protest against the monster speaking altered the character's appearance, showcasing the impact of creative choices on the film. Elsa Lanchester, who portrayed the iconic bride, faced challenges standing at seven feet tall on stilts, adding a physical dimension to the character. Behind-the-scenes insights, such as cinematographer John Mescal's serious drinking problem and director Whale's determination in casting decisions, highlight the dedication of the filmmakers. The intricate casting decisions, including considerations for actresses Bridget Helm and Louise Brooks, underscore the complexity of bringing the characters to life. Director Whale's commitment to his vision led to a temporary shutdown of production when he insisted on casting up. Peggy is the blind hermit. These behind-the-scenes glimpses into the challenges and choices made during the production of The Bride of Frankenstein add depth to the narrative, shedding light on the dedication of the filmmakers and the intricate process of bringing this enduring classic to the screen. As the curtain falls on our journey through the captivating tale of The Bride of Frankenstein, I urge you to pause, not just to witness the end credits, but to reflect upon the timeless echoes this 1935 masterpiece leaves in the corridors of your mind. Mary Shelley's creation, brought to life in all its cinematic glory, is not merely a creature of science, but a mirror reflecting the essence of humanity. Consider the flickering shadows on the screen as whispers of an era gone by, an era where black and white hues painted stories that dared to defy convention. The bride, with her electrifying presence, beckons us to explore the depths of our own humanity, to question the nature of creation and the responsibility that comes with it. As the credits roll, I invite you to share your personal rendezvous with this cinematic marvel. Unearth your memories, untangle the threads of emotion woven by this film and let the words spill onto the canvas of discussion. Did it awaken a dormant fascination for the macabre? Perhaps it sparked a philosophical flame within you. Whatever the case, your thoughts are the stitches binding the fabric of this shared experience. So, my fellow cinephiles, let us not allow the Bride of Frankenstein to fade into the annals of history, but rather, let it be reborn with each recollection and conversation. Share your reflections, your favorite scenes, and the emotions that linger in the wake of this cinematic symphony. Thank you for embarking on this cinematic journey with me. Your time and thoughts are the true treasures that enrich the tapestry of our shared love for the art of storytelling. Until our next adventure, keep the spirit of the bride alive in your reflections.